Welcome back to another SCP Resurrection reading, everyone. Today, we have part two, seven, and eight. Are We There Yet? by Lurk Deep. And I Thought You Died Alone by A Random Day. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Are we there yet? All I'm saying is we've listened to this for two hours straight. Dietrich rolled his eyes for the third time. Yeah? And I had to sit through your playlist across two state lines, Bridge. It's my turn. Yeah, but the pumpkins have a little variety. Bridge fumbled with the turning knob. Dietrich quickly slapped his hand. The hand was retracted, followed by a scoff. Rude. Bridge, serious. If you don't like muddy waters, you can just get the hell out. I'm sick of you barely aching. Don't make me pull rank diet, bitch. Cute. Pull rank all you like. I ain't changing the channel. Guys, I've been listening to you two piss and moan over the radio since Kansas. I'm turning it off now. Alexandra then cut off XM radio privileges. Alex, that's not the least bit fair. Dietrich fumbled with his phone in the cup holder. Alex, turn it back on. A Alex? Bridge folded his arms, closed his eyes, and slouched into his seat further. Silent treatment. Dietrich tossed his phone over his shoulder and into the back seat. From the rearview mirror, he could see Merle enjoying the breeze from an open window. Their eyes met, and he signed Dietrich a response. You play too much fucking blues music anyway. Dietrich batted the rearview mirror into a cockeyed position so he didn't have to look at him, but Merle remained visible in the reflection of the dash. Whatever. Not even halfway there, and I'm already fixing to drive this car into the nearest river and drown all three of you. His mother's words coming out of his mouth. Three. Yourself included. Bridge snorted. Dietrich only grumbled more under his breath. Hey, how come we didn't just fly to Side 17? Flying means having to put in requests. Means your name's on a manifest. Means paperwork. I was hired to avoid paperwork as much as possible. Half of spine is keeping low to the ground, Bridge. Bridge looked out the window. I guess that's true. I'm probably just antsy, but it would have been a little nicer to just get a two-hour flight over with. Up ahead. Just shut the hell. Dietrich glanced at Merle's reflection, then jerked his head back up to see a police checkpoint up ahead. Orange cones and squad cars funneled traffic in the road as they let other cars through slowly. Each one was being examined. He gently stopped behind the line of cars. Not police. What's wrong, Dietrich? Looking for him. That ain't no everyday police checkpoint. Dietrich cut the steering wheel hard to make a turn to cut across to the other side of the highway. Alexandra chirped over the speakers. He's right, sir. Local dispatch has them responding to a fire. Duck. Duck! Duck! Dietrich pulled down on Bridge's collar just as the passenger's side window glass shattered. The bullet raced by and put a hole in his empty headrest. For sure, someone was shooting at them from behind the trees. Dietrich floored the gas pedal almost through the car itself as they sped away in the opposite direction. Do you see the shooter? Bridge! Is it the same lady? It came from the woods. I don't fucking know. I hope you like bullets. Automatic gunfire chased them down the lane as bullets ricocheted off the lightly armored roof and trunk. Fortunately for them, nothing standard issue armoring on Foundation motor pool vehicles couldn't handle. Dietrich looked at his driver's side mirror, just in time to see a .45 ACP round whiz through it. Cheer, 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 cheer! Told you. Bridge muffled a response while keeping his head between his knees. This wouldn't happen if we were on a plane. Bridge, Merle, shut up! Who the fuck is Myrtle? Guys, take the exit here into town. Get off the highway. We can lose them in more populated areas. The SUV squealed and nearly tipped as it made a 40-mile-per-hour drift into the main road into town. 
Alexandra was nice enough to work ahead of them, switching the next four intersections to green simultaneously. Green, 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 and green. All clear. Outstanding, Alex. Now find us another way out. Bridge fumbled with an outdated roadmap in the glove box as Dietrich kept his eyes on the nearby buildings for more policemen. Recalculating. Alex! Bridge frowned. Sorry, sir. Um, take this next route. It's up on the... The SUV immediately turned. Left. I saw it. We need to ditch this car, though. Dietrich gripped the wheel harder as he sped down the empty asphalt lane. Three more miles, and there's an old rail yard. We can park there. Fucking A, Alex. Call for a pickup, too. Make it a level four priority. Bridge folded the map back up and shoved it back into the glove box. Okie dokie. I'm online with Site 17 Dispatch. We're in range for a chopper evac, redirecting them now. Alexandra chirped over the car's speakers with a comforting and positive tone. Bridge sighed with relief. Rank has its perks. Dietrich didn't respond. He slowed down and eventually pulled into the rail yard. It was a museum of rust and bird droppings, mostly. He set the parking brake and sat silent. Alex, what's the ETA on that pickup? Twenty minutes, sir. Don't call me sir. He shook his head, glancing over at Dietrich with a cold glance. Just enough time to interrogate someone. Now, want to tell me what the fuck is going on? Dietrich squinted his eyes. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but your tone is gonna get you cold cock. Uh-huh. You knew those weren't cops. And you looked over your shoulder every other minute, like you're being followed. And you talk to yourself all the damn time. Bridge cracked his neck in irritation. And who the shit is Merle? Dietrich started to sweat and chuckled nervously. Ah, I do none of them things. Yeah, you kind of do, sir. Dietrich quickly shut off his phone. So what? You thinking I have something to do with those getting shot at? I just saved your life, asshole. Bridge banked up a bit, then glanced at his donut at the headrest. Look, I know something's up with you, Dietrich. Kill him. Dietrich's eyes darted between Merle and Bridge. Bridge glanced in Merle's general direction, then back at Dietrich. He will report us. Kill him before they arrive. S Stop! Dietrich stepped out of the car. Stop what? Just tell me what's going on, Dietrich. Bridge followed. No. It was MTF Mu-13 all over again. Merle surrounded him on all sides. No matter where he turned, he was there, in the rail yard, with them. Even when he closed his eyes, Merle stared back at him in the dark. Dietrich? Take a breath. Calm down. He will put you in a cell. Stop it, Merle. Just like your brother. Fucking stop! Dietrich fell to his knees and flopped forward, dropping his phone and his keys. That time, Bridge really had tasered him. Bridge let off a short burst of voltage and approached. Told you. Now that I have your attention... Who is this Merle? Do not say it. Dietrich caught his breath and picked his face up off the dusty ground. Bridge, I, I can't. They'd lock me up for good. I, I can keep it together. I can, honest. Bridge took a seat on a pile of railroad ties. Maybe. You think you don't need a psyche eval for whatever your condition is? Maybe you think that gives you some kind of advantage out there? Dietrich clenched his fist. I ain't crazy, Bridge. Bridge held up his hand to finish his point. I don't care. I skimmed your file before we left. Six transfers in 12 months. I don't know what you're hiding, but you're abusing Foundation bureaucracy to keep low. Dietrich shook his head, but it was apparent that Ridge hit the nail on the head. You keep it together while we do this. I'll put in another transfer for you to anywhere you want with 
full endorsement. You or Mr. Hyde cross me, I'll hand you over to internal affairs and they can deal with you or I'll crush you myself. Savvy? He will break this deal. Yeah. Dietrich took a knee and pulled the taser darts out of him. What guarantee I have? Bridge picked up Dietrich's mobile phone. You don't. Nobody ever does around here, but I could have shot you with an actual gun. Dietrich chuckled and took his phone back. It was a sincere and awkward kind of laugh. All right, deal. They both shook hands in the rail yard, while Merle adamantly shook his head against it. This will not end well. Shut up, Merle. Bridge smiled, looking in the wrong direction from Merle. Yes. Shut up. In the distance, the helicopters could be heard closing in. It wasn't but a few minutes before a red and blue news helicopter landed in the rail yard with the words Sasakwa County Press declared on the side. Dietrich and Bridge backed up as the dust cloud enveloped. A Slavic-looking gentleman with tussled brown hair and a very expensive-looking hunter green suit hopped out and hustled over to Dietrich and Bridge. Agent look and Dr. Bridge. Bridge shouted over the helicopter. That's us! Show me your ID, Dietrich yelled. The man gave him a perturbed look, then fumbled for his foundation badge and tossed it to him. Dietrich nodded in satisfaction. Alexander Fox, agent. No offense. Assassins are trying to put us in the dirt. Fox nodded and mentioned for them to get into the helicopter. All three hustled inside, but not before Fox pulled the pin of an incendiary grenade and tossed it into the open SUV. Live the car with digging off. Boom. The car erupted into black smoke and flames as the helicopter rose up over the hills in the direction of their final destination. Fox leaned in close to Dietrich and Bridge. When we land, rooms will be set up for you. We will be debriefed in the morning, clear? Both nodded. Dietrich then leaned back in his seat next to Merle. We made it. And now, for I thought you died alone. A rather different one. Let's get into it. I thought you died alone. To Santosh Desai, from Arvind Desai, subject movie. Hi Santosh, I haven't seen you in a while and was wondering what you're up to. Interested in seeing a movie on Friday? Best? Arvind. To Arvind from Santosh. Re movie. I'm busy that day. Santosh. Excerpt from Bowie Commission Probabilistic Risk Assessment of Project Able. Authorized by Dr. Lara Aritza, Dr. Janet Byrnes, Dr. Kane Crow, Dr. Arvind Desai, Dr. Reginald Toffer. Alpha-1, Alpha Romeo, the Mobile Task Force leader. Although SCP-076-2's violent, capricious, and sociopathic nature presents a severe risk to Omega-7 personnel, we considered it unlikely that Omega-7 will experience this kind of internal conflict, assuming that Mobile Task Force completes at least one mission per week. Further safeguards are discussed in Section 7A. SCP-105, although in adolescence, is clearly willing to work with the Foundation to contain anomalies. Its ability to influence events from long range would strongly benefit applications such as espionage, reconnaissance, and direct conflict with anomalies. Given the current state of affairs, this probabilistic risk assessment has deemed the usage of anomalous objects within Mobile Task Force Omega-7 Pandora's box to fall within acceptable operating parameters. Omega-7 is cleared to operate from a risk assessment standpoint. Postscript. Congratulations to all members of Pandora's box. You are the first of new breed of defenders. The world has changed a great deal since the inception of the Foundation. 
where once we contained, now we must exploit. Anomalies are becoming more dangerous, more widespread, and more common. Once we were static, reacting to threats. With the formation of Mobile Task Force Omega-7, we are proactive. Not only will the Foundation contain anomalies, but we will contain them before they can become anomalies. We wish the best of luck to all members of Pandora's Box. Containment Fatality On 527, Year Unknown, all personnel at Containment Area 25 were killed when the nuclear warhead containment measure was activated in order to contain a severe containment breach caused by SCP-076-2. At the time, SCP-076-2 was a part of Mobile Task Force Omega-7, but had not been assigned to a mission in at least an unspecified number of months. To help alleviate its increasingly destructive activities, SCP-076-2 was introduced to a redacted SCP to see if its psychic capabilities could be used to calm SCP-076. However, upon contact with 076-2, the redacted SCP caused the immediate disintegration of 076-2's explosive collar, enabling it to rampage through the site, killing numerous personnel as well as releasing an unspecified SCP from containment. Proper countermeasures could not be established, as most of the surviving personnel had been recently transferred and were still unfamiliar with Area 25's evacuation protocols. Peter Containment Specialist Santosh Desai activated the nuclear warhead countermeasures before dying to a redacted SCP's cognitohazardous effects. All personnel on site were killed, but 076-2 and a redacted SCP were contained successfully. Desai was awarded a posthumous Foundation Star for his act of bravery. Best practices Take it upon yourself to always be up to date on site and area safety protocols. To Santosh Desai from Arvind Desai, subject lunch. Hi, Santosh. Uh, we haven't talked in a while, and I was hoping to catch up. I hear you have a girlfriend now. I'd love to hear all about it. Is she pretty? What's her name? I looked at your schedule. You're from 1 to 3 p.m. on Thursday, so I was thinking we could have lunch then. You can pick the restaurant? Love, Arvind. To Arvind from Santosh. Free lunch. I'm busy that day. Santosh. Armory testing range, site 42 registry log. 10 23 07 16 14. Entry. Weapon Technicians S. Ready, R. Prelis. 10.51.17. Entry. Emergency Services K. Appleton. M. Daniels. R. Dorian. L. Ferrier. F. Fiskerson. M. Manson. N. Ophility. J. Spinelli. K. Then Cantramant F. Al Zahid 10.55.32 Entry Site Director A. Desai 11.05.43 Exit Emergency Services K. Appleton M. Daniels R. Duran L. Fierro F. Fiskerson M. Manson N. O. Laharty J. Spinelli, K. Van Katraman, F. Alzai, Site Director A. Desai, Weapons Technicians A. Arman, S. Ferretti, J. Maxwell, N. Packerton, R. Trellis. Of note, that's three more people exiting than have entered. Level 2 Armory, Site 42. Registry log. 112047-1714. Entry. Site Director A. Desai. 112109. Exit. Site Director A. Desai. 2. 
Maria Jones from Arvind Desai. Subject, Site 42 Armory Authorization. Hi, Maria. As you may have heard, five weapons technicians were killed yesterday in an accident at Site 42's weapon testing lab. The cause of this accident was determined to be a malfunction in the Mark or Gluon Separator, a prototype that I had shelved almost a decade ago. It was sitting in the armory under level 4 clearance until yesterday. Two of the technicians involved, Rudolf Frelis and Shin Ferretti, somehow received clearance to access the device. They were level 2 technicians. I didn't authorize this, and I hadn't heard anything about reviving that project. Would you be kind enough to look at the records and tell me who authorized them? Thank you, Arvind Desai, Site Director, Site 42. Two, Arvind Desai, from Maria Jones, CC'd in R05-7 and 05-10. Subject, read. Site 42, Arnitmary Authorization. Hi, Arvind. There's no record of Rudolf Trellis or Shin Ferretti being authorized to access the device. If you're positive that it was those two, I'll talk to the IT department, the director of task forces, and get MTF Beta 1 to look into it. How does that sound? Best, Maria Jones, director, R-A-I-S-A. -A. Two, Maria Jones, from Arvind Desai. Subject, re, -re. Site 42, Armory Authorization. Hi, Maria. I'm quite positive the logs do not lie. I had to pull three prototypes Grant and Anchors out of the storage to keep the lab and half the containment from disintegrating into their component ports. Please contact me as soon as you hear anything, or have Beta-1 contact me if they find anything. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Arvind Desai. Site Director, Site 42. 2. Arvind Desai, from 05-7, flagged top priority memetic encryption unscrambled. CC'd in on Maria Jones and 05-10. Subject, re 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 Site 42, Armory Authorization. Dr. Desai, I would like to meet with you to discuss this issue. We will conduct a video conference tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 exactly. To connect to me, log into Foundation Video Chat and join the server at address 125.34.0.51234372. Enter the password. I'm not reading that password. Exactly as shown. 05-7. 2. Santosh Desai from Arvind Desai Hi, Santosh. I haven't seen you in several months and wanted to visit. You're going to be on vacation next week, so I was thinking I could stop by then. I just want to spend some time with my son. I love you. Love, Arvind. 2. Arvind Desai from Santosh Desai. Subject, re-visit. Mum can visit. Santosh. 2. Arvind Desai from... Janet Byrnes. Subject 3. Alpha 9 Whistleblower Protection. Dear Arvin, your request for whistleblower protection regarding Mobile Task Force Alpha 9 has been reviewed and denied on the grounds that there is nothing to blow the whistle on. All aspects of Alpha 9 were reviewed by the Ethics Committee already, otherwise it wouldn't exist at all. I know you're thinking about Santosh's death. Please don't dwell on the past, it won't bring him back. I know this email doesn't touch on nearly as many things as it should, so I'd like to sit down with you sometime and talk about this entire issue. Talk like old times. How does Lunch Thursday sound? Best, Janet Burns, Director of the Ethics Committee. To the Undersecretariat at goc.un.org from a 239 daddy at q2awda.net Subject, Foundation Whistleblower Seeking Sanctuary To the Global Occult Coalition Undersecretary, I have stolen an anomalous item and am using it to ensure that this transmission will not be noticed. I have information that may be of use to the Global Occult Coalition regarding activities of the SCP Foundation and wish to claim whistleblower protection. One week ago, two technicians were ordered to test a shelved prototype weapon in Foundation Site 42. The device promptly malfunctions, exploded, killed the testers and three other innocent technicians, and may result in the disintegration of a 500,000 square meters testing facility. I recently had a conversation with 05-7, one of the leaders of the Foundation, who explained that she wished to use the weapon in Project Resurrection. 
which is an attempt to recreate a defunct Foundation Special Forces group that utilized anomalous SCP objects. See the attached document for more information. Mobile Task Force Omega-7 resulted in the nuclear destruction of entire sites, the release of numerous potentially world-ending anomalies, and caused reality itself to fundamentally change through the action of just two or three different maniacs. Now the Foundation is trying to recreate this disastrous endeavor through Mobile Task Force Alpha 9. I have already tried to stop this from the inside, but nobody will listen, forcing me to turn to the GOC. I will relay as much information to the GOC as I can regarding this project whenever possible. ARD. To ADAD from Undersecretariat. Subject, re, Foundation Whistleblower Seeking Sanctuary. Prove that you are not a double agent. To the Undersecretariat from ADAD. Subject, re, re, Foundation Whistleblower Seeking Sanctuary. Attached is a file containing significant portions of the Foundation's documentation of the Global Occult Coalition. It is up to you to decide if this is sufficient proof. At the very least, it will give you more information regarding your interactions with the Foundation. As I acquire more information regarding Alpha 9, I will pass it on to you. ARD. 2. A Dad from Undersecretariat. Subject. Re Re Re, Foundation Whistleblower Seeking Sanctuary. You have been granted probationary undercover operative status under the codename Cuckoo. We await further information. 2. Janet Behrens from Arvid Desai. Subject, thank you for lunch. Dear Janet, thank you for lunch. It was terrific, but not as much as our discussion. You are right. Santosh may be gone, but I can honor him by doing my best to uphold the Foundation's mission. He died to protect the world, and I will not let that sacrifice be in vain. I have spent the day thinking about it, and I am resending my concerns on Mobile Task Force of Alpha 9. At the very least, I can help guide it and keep us from repeating the mistakes of the past. I will be speaking with O5-7 about how I can help. Again, I greatly appreciate our lunch. You were right about what you said. I just needed an outside perspective. The world truly has changed, but I've been too caught up to see it. I look forward to working with you. Mobile Task Force Alpha 9 may truly be our last hope. Thank you, Arvind. 2. Santosh Desai from Arvind Desai. Re -re Visit. Santosh. Why will you not let me see my own son? Are you spitting your own father? I love you, Arvind. To Arvind Desai from Santosh Desai. Re -re -re. Visit. Yes. Santosh. Alright, and that's all we have time to read today. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope that you all have a good time out there.